listeners and welcome back to the GI Huddle. Summer's over, we've just got a large batch of magazines over the line and now it's time for us to come out of hibernation. Um, and this is quite an interesting one because you can uh, think of this one as a panel about panels, if you like. Um, we're going to be talking uh, just about industry conferences, how we find them, what our experiences have been with them, especially with uh, such a big one uh, such as G2E coming up just around the corner next month as well. Um, so without further ado, uh, I present to you a panel that will, of course, never be accused of being safe or boring, as we sometimes get at some industry conferences. It's the Gambling Insider editorial team. So hello to Tim Poole. Hi, everyone. Matthew Enderby. Hello. Nathan Joyce. Hello. And last but certainly not least, this is like uh, when a band appoints a new member. Let me introduce you to our new recruit, Owen Flanders. Hello, Owen. Hello there. Uh, so just thought I'd just start with a general point. Do we enjoy industry conferences? Who wants to jump in? Uh, I'll kick it off. Yeah, I enjoy them as, as long as they're good. <laughs> <laughs> Very selective criteria. Yeah, no, I think that, yeah, I also think they're good. Um, good fun. You're always good to get out of the office. And when you've got like that kind of concentration of the people that you're going to be emailing or calling anyway, everyone's sort of in that same building under the one roof. It's, it's great. What have been the good and bad examples of industry shows that you've been to in the time that, that you've been here? Maybe not just at, G, at GI, but any jobs that you've been in? Uh, so I'll throw out that a lot depends on the moderator. So if the moderator doesn't know what they're talking about, that can uh, hold back the whole which, which we Which we do. Often you'll have moderators who'll make a joke and um, sort of tumbleweed, and the, the panellists don't understand it, and, and the audience don't understand it, and they've just killed the atmosphere in the whole room. You're not there for comedy. <laughs> well, it's got to be good comedy, right? Um, and, uh, yeah, so I'd say a good conference can hinge on the moderator. That's what I'd say. Who else has got a pearl of wisdom? Think of any, any bad ones. Um, yeah, no, it's hard to think of like a, I mean, I can think of a few examples, but you don't want to sort of name too many names specifically, but yeah, I think the moderator's got to be sort of almost as invested or active in the field as the, um, as the people he's talking to, you know, he's got to have a, an invested interest in what's going on and be up to date. And, um, I think that is like, like Tim said, that's often a big problem when, when, when they're not, when they're sort of spending a bit too much time, maybe talking about their own self or trying to make a good impression in that sense the best thing they could be doing is asking good questions to get great answers Nathan um, I really hate the interactive ones yes I absolutely hate them because if you go to any other conference it's normally like at the end of it has anyone got a question and no one puts the hand up because no one wants to come like you're not there to express your knowledge you're there to pick up knowledge so I just hate anyone to where it's like, right, it's all to get together, let's get to know people. It's not for me. Mm. It's something that I personally got better with, but I, I think a lot of people, certainly when they start out in the industry, would feel nervous in that situation, even if they did have a question of actually putting their hands up. <coughs> so I've seen examples of times where people might take a question from the audience, but it's written down or something, or it might be anonymous or, or something like that. Mm. But it's a, good point that <coughs> it's a good point that Nathan raises there about how you try and be interactive and you can try and get people together, but then you kind of rely on people and their own confidence and things like that, don't you? Especially if, say, you have like a roundtable conference and then when people are just sitting there, you know, they might be comfortable talking to their own colleagues, but actually getting these things out in the open. I mean, you've got the speakers up there who are fine with talking to an audience, but actually, yeah. wh what could you actually do to actually get more out of it and actually make people be more involved with it? Like Liam says, when you try to be interactive, yeah, because a lot of the time it doesn't really work. Yeah, it kind of almost has the, like, the opposite effect as to what, the intention is you know so we want people talking we want people engaged and like you know getting up and moving around but then in the end it's like people s are slinking to the back rows when they know the question's going to come their way or you know just not being as active as as the desired effect is meant to be, be. yeah it's a tricky one because if a, a panel is scheduled for say 45 minutes and the speakers are done after half an hour and they say okay any questions and then they get disappointed when they're not I think the speakers have really got to be prepared to fill out the whole slot um, without audience interaction because it can go one of two ways with that um, like you say people m might know more than the panellists uh, hypothetically but they, they they came there to listen rather than speak mm. on the flip side of that limit people to one question each because you sometimes get that one person no, who asks true. four questions in a row and nine times out of the ten same question been, four different ways <laughs> yeah or they've been actually already been answered within yeah. the conference itself so yeah on the flip side of it, if you are confident, limit it to one question. And then it's going to be a good question, isn't it? Because you're going to make sure it's your best one. Mm. See, this can also be an issue because I was at one last week where they were talking about uh, future M&A in the market, just across the whole of the market, both operators and suppliers, what have you. And I asked a question about DraftKings and SB Tech, the rumours that were there a few, few months ago, and just asked, um, 
would we be likely to see more opportunities like that where you've got the operators trying to buy the tech and bring it all in-house but because it's like a rumor and I don't think any of them had any personal attachment to it but because it's a, a rumor I just think they all and it seemed really tentative to answer but and, and I just sometimes get the impression that even when somebody does ask a question that's maybe not just a chance for the speaker to promote what they do or to talk really highly about the industry or themselves that even then you can just make the atmosphere a bit more frosty sometimes you know so it's like can we actually use these conferences as a means to actually have more difficult conversation at times and actually get the speakers out of their comfort zone? Should, we, should people try to do that a bit more? Yeah, I think that should be the goal, the goal of a moderator when they sort of pull them away from all their prepared you know, answers and, and you know, just the usual speech that they might go through. That's when you're going to get something a bit more genuine and a bit more interesting, really. You know? yeah. yeah, I think it depends on the speaker um, themselves because if they're passionate, if they're charismatic, then it'll come through wh whatever they're saying. And uh, on this point, that's slightly different, is a great conference is when there's an actual debate, uh, like an actual disagreement and argument. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously within reason and professional, no one's going personal with each other. But Thank you, Jason Robbins and Joe Asher. Yeah. Oh, and <laughs> actually, that, they, they yeah. got personal and then that was, yeah. that, that, was, that was great as well. Um, yeah, you wrote an article about something like that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, the more, the more... Are you just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the more, the more debate there is. And um, even not necessarily disagreement, but even if you're if you're on the same side as someone, you can raise counterpoints. You know? Yeah, yeah, of course. No, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Because <laughs> you covered all bases there. Yeah, just about. Okay. Just like every good conference should. Mm. The, the best ones that I went to actually were just over three years ago, uh, and it was the series of all party parliamentary betting and gaming group. I think I've got the correct order of words there yeah, uh, when they hosted their seminars in Westminster uh, at Palace of Westminster a few years ago where each speaker would stand up and do a speech which would all be well and good but then the juicy stuff would always come in the Q&A afterwards and in some cases it was people who were you know anti fob tea because that was a debate that was going on so much at the time they let those people into the conferences like the people like Baxter and the people who would ask the tough questions of the operators who, who were up there speaking and at, at times it would, might get slightly heated but it, it was still respectful yeah. You know, which, I, which I think is, is what you want again it's the case of should we be more open to something like that where because we're an industry that talks all the time about coming together and speaking but there's sometimes I feel like what's the point when we come together at these conferences and no one from outside the industry knows what we're talking about should we encourage more of that sometimes in terms of the some of the people who might be more anti-gambling or the people who, who might naturally ask the tougher questions than, than people inside the industry would yeah, I think an add value as long as it's not like talk sport when they bring on your, your local crazy Liverpool fan who says yeah. we should get a trophy for finishing second <laughs> as long as anything like that then um, even Tim with, wouldn't say that yeah, yeah. within within reason then um, yeah sure I mean variety is the spice of life right you um <laughs> you can uh, <laughs> apparently that's funny but yeah you can uh, <laughs> that's already in the top three GI huddle quotes of all time I think you know if, if you if you have people from different industries it, it will and actually I think in some conferences we've been at recently they, they've had people there who, who work with gaming companies but um, spent most of their careers in advertising or something else so they can add a lot um, to you know mm -hmm. to our, our sort of topics and debates these conferences aren't going to invite people in who are anti the industry because at the end of the day that's the opposite why the conferences are, are even on, isn't that right? Is well, it, in, in, that's, in that series, it was something they encouraged, but I think it was just because they wanted to get the conversation going. So it's just a case of, okay, if we, even if we've got people who disagree on things, we'll just have this out. Um, mm. It's a bit di difficult, I think, at a lot of conferences, but especially the ones that are reliant on sponsorship. Yeah, um, yeah a bit of a different yeah, Betting on sports aren't going to have someone coming in slate in the industry, are they? Because where's that going to get them? There's going to mm. be no plus for either one either side yeah, but then I think it's the same with anything if you've got people who can make a defence for, for a certain argument you can yeah, just you exactly. just help the conversation I, I mean like it's one thing to say they don't want to have someone slating the industry but to have slating. Sort of, yeah, yeah like an open or honest discussion can allow operators to defend themselves in a way and says no look we are meeting these kind of requirements we are ticking all these boxes and you know people are just throwing around accusations I think the industry is scared that they're going to be Caught out. Yeah, no. Yeah. I think it's uh, it's I just a bit easier for it, it, yeah. like the panelists. If if you just say to a um, you know a CEO of a company saying like we want you to come and do a conference on whatever topic, and then say but we're going to have somebody from this charity that's quite outspoken against your business there, then then this it's going to be a completely different proposition, isn't it? They're not going to sit there mm. and think oh this is just going to be you know just like somewhat of an easy ride. Like they know they're going to be grilled and they're going to have to mm. stand up to that. And sometimes they might say oh, maybe I'll give that one a pass. Yeah. Yeah, you, that's, on, it, oh, sorry, the, that's it, they just pass on it, they wouldn't go to it. Yeah, yeah. No mm -hmm. comments better than them just like drowning. 
because they know <laughs> yeah. they, probably know, they probably know they will yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say touching on a previous uh, podcast it'd be great to get Tom Watson into one of these and then we could actually grill him and um, mm. take apart his arguments the problem is uh, you know a journalist from a national newspaper would be there and only report on what he said and not what everyone else said yeah. disproving what he said yeah yeah. It all depends on the purposes of what you get out of them, though, because obviously a lot of people go to these things just for guidance or advice, or they might do. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not absolutely certain, but it might just be a case of, um, you know, you want to launch your sports betting solution in the US, and then you go to a panel where you've got Canby on there talking about how they did it in the US, and then you get tips mm-hmm. from it and, and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, though whether that actually happens, and of the time I don't know, because then you're asking the speakers to maybe give away their secrets and that kind of thing. Yeah, so again, exactly. That's that's always part of it, isn't it? It's like, yeah, I'll tell you this very limited scope of what we did but not tell you the actual juicy bits that you the bits that you really want to know <laughs> yeah exactly exactly um so let's get the the newbies perspective on this and i'll just uh come to you next no pressure at all um but yeah what have you made of the first industry events that you've been to It'd be interesting just to get your uh take on it as someone who's just coming from the outside yeah um i thought it was really interesting to be fair because obviously all the big companies are there um previously working in B to C, where I was speaking with customers regularly. Yeah, I was sort of at the bottom of these debates, so I was speaking with them while they're complaining about these kind of things that they're talking about at the top level. So I thought it was interesting to come in and then see, you know, all see CEOs speaking in a panel about these sort of things. Um, I thought, I mean, I agree to be honest that um, a good moderator makes makes good conversation because that, there was, I mean, I've only been to four, hmm. I think, conferences, but. Out of them, ones the best moderators made the best conversations, yeah. and it is about having debate at the end of the day. And if everyone's just agreeing and promoting themselves, then it's just—I mean, it's just a bit, bit boring, to be honest. Yeah. Rather than you know, it's not—it's not actually an interesting conversation. So, um, I think debate is 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 the best thing for those kinds of things, especially if you're trying to, you know, get to like the heart of an issue or try and solve a problem. Then it's better to have both sides of the of the argument there, mm. and you know, most of the time it's not. So, yeah, I mean, I think it was interesting being there, definitely. Um, but some of the conferences could have been better for that reason. Hmm. I think that was a great response because you said no pressure on the newbie. And then he said, yeah, I think it's all on the moderator. So he loved it straight back <laughs> at you. <laughs> a bit of tennis there. Right, um, but no, it's interesting, you, you know, as you say there about how you were um, you know, on the customer service side when, when you worked for, uh, for an operator. Um, so just thought it would be good to get your perspective. Now you had a bit more rotated the B2B world and how everyone... Um, is when you know when we come together for an event. What's your perception in comparison with everything you were seeing about the industry on the B two C side? Um, I think on the on the B two C side, most most complaints and things that we were handling were all about just misinterpreting rules, things like that, and it's also not getting paid out on bets fast enough. So it's not it's not the top issues that have been discussed mm. at those kinds of things. But um, yeah, it's just interesting to get both both perspectives I guess from mm. the customers and, and the CEOs and things like that so. yeah. do you think it would ever help sometimes I guess you know some of you guys can come in who've worked at operators but do you think it would help sometimes if the people who, who don't have so much to do with the B2B side were just a bit more aware of what is talked about at the top level or do you think it's relevant but yeah I think I think so I think that's probably where internal communications departments comes in mm. come in uh, in terms of from the top down they can sort of let's say if an executive went to an event like uh, like one of our industry conferences, and then late, relay it back to all the employees, or have the hundreds or thousands of, of people they have, uh, and they d- even if they didn't click on it, just that that information was there for them. I think it wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily affect people in their day to day lives, but those with interest, you know, they have the option to click on it. I think there's there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, the next thing to come on to is how conference schedules are put together. Um, now I say this is one. I mean, we um, here. Uh, schedule our own event uh, affiliate con Sophia every year so we appreciate how difficult it can be sometimes to put these schedules together and put, get the speakers together and everything else um, on the organizational side but um, for example you know we see a lot of esports coming up in conference schedules which sometimes feels a little bit out of kilter with its actual position in the betting market um, so I just want to sometimes our conference schedule sometimes a bit too focused on what's new and trendy I think we can all uh, agree yes I think we have all agreed in the past um, it, it's all right to have you know a, a few shows and, and also some of these topics will have specific shows dedicated to them so there are specific let's say blockchain events out there specific esports conferences out there so yeah maybe the, the sort of the more mainstream widespread conferences need to acknowledge that they don't really need to 
jump on the trend as, as much. Yeah, but it's like any sort of marketing, isn't it? Any marketing in any industry is going to go with something which is new, whether that appeals to you as a person, because maybe we don't like esports, that's what we're battering anymore. But you're just going to go with what's new in any line of work, and that's what's being promoted, because everyone sort of, if you're a well respected business, everyone knows what you do, but why should they keep going back to you and what are you doing to improve that? And esports is now part of that next generation. I don't like it, but it's, it's, it's there and it's growing, and as we can see from its size, so. Yeah, as, as long as it's sorry, as long as there's no overkill, you know, because yeah. Yeah. like that would be great. Let's say if it took up maybe maybe even a quarter yeah. of the whole conference schedule, that would be quite strong. But I think if there was any more than that, it's, like a certain show which had I think pretty much a whole day devoted to it. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember what the show was, but yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> lies. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think you know when you go to these conferences, you wanna you wanna learn something as well. You know, you wanna sort of have your eyes open to set maybe a new part of the industry that you knew was there but you didn't really fully appreciate or understand and I think that's why sort of something that's new or something trendy is people are going to want to go to those talks and, and, and hear things and, and learn more so I think that there is obviously a balancing act to it you can't go overload and say it's all about esports or cryptocurrency or whatever the, the top topic is today you know but I definitely feel that that's something that people are looking for yeah, exactly what do you know when it comes to betting on football what would you say everything what would you, what would you know when it comes to betting on esports probably not a lot so that's my argument the thing is like it's just always about the balance of these things because it's like last year at G2E as you could probably imagine there was a huge amount of discussion about sports betting because Passport had just been overturned a couple of months earlier yeah of course yeah and the only thing that really sticks in my mind to be honest is when Sarah Slane had, had an argument with Kenny Gersh from the MLB about integrity fees but it's interesting you know, again because it comes back to the point there was a lot of discussion about sports betting most of it I would never remember now and to be fair, we, we could have been guilty of it ourselves at times. I think all the publishers mm. talking too much about sports betting really this time last year. But um, the only one I remember is when two people had a bit of a row. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it goes to show, I think, that's what, that's what will stick in people's minds. Um, but then, you know, obviously, at most conferences, there will be some element of networking to them as well. Um, and I'll say this, you know, with an eye on a certain person who, along with myself, might have stayed, you know, all night at an event watching the Super Bowl last year and uh, still plowed his way through the next day but um, Tim yeah yeah. Um, but you know should there be more of a focus on networking than conferences do we enjoy the networking generally more than the conferences uh, I think it depends on the event because um, speaking to a few people in the last few weeks I think certain events are more for networking certain events are more for conferences and mm. the networking is great and often uh, you, you'll you sort of have you'll have maybe five or six back-to-back -back meetings and think, I'd love to get this conference in. But ultimately, if your meeting's overrun and you need to meet someone, you need to meet someone you're going to interview or if it's a, a, for, for a salesperson, if it's a client, you're going to pro prioritize that over a conference because that's really, if it's a networking event, that's, that's what you're there for and that's going to generate your, your sort of leads at the end as well. Yeah, I don't think there needs to be sort of any more of an emphasis than, than there already is. I think it's... Uh, Offer lots of both, and people will fill in when, um, when and where they sort of feel best. Mm. No, it's an interesting one though, because thinking about it generally, how many sort of leading CEOs in the industry do we see around at networking events? Unless it's their company that's hosting it, but even then, I yeah, think exactly. might, often, might often only make a brief appearance. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, th I think what's good is when they do certain conferences and panels. And then yeah. they probably have a rush of people sort of uh, trying to meet them. Yeah, after right that. afterwards. You can always see that the, the second yeah. the mic's like put back into the stand, it's just like get the business card out, go go go. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but I think that leads to another point in that the the lineup can determine, can make or break a conference before it's even started because this is where, like you say, David, obviously it's not easy to schedule an event or to plan something like this. Um, but if you have knowledgeable people who can sort of they've been in the industry for so long or not necessarily they've been in for so long but their knowledge is such that if someone gives them a tough question they can just click their fingers and, and have the right answer um, it's not easy and that's why it's such such a such a good skill to have so I think a good, a good lineup and you, you're sort of 75% of the way there for a good yeah, conference definitely so I'll just get a brief summary from everyone then sum up what would you personally do to improve industry conferences as a general point um, hmm well, one thing I'd say is wh whenever we come back from events, there's always a little email questionnaire about w what was good, what was bad. If people, pe I know people fill that out because I do. Um, and if people, if companies actually <laughs> look at You those, are the guy. Yeah, You're the guy. I'm the one guy. <laughs> if, okay, let, let's phrase that differently then. If more people actually did it, then <laughs> yeah. and if uh, companies took it on board, 
as harsh as it sounds, some moderators, they're there to promote themselves and they might not be good moderators. So maybe move them around a little bit, you know, a lot like you would manage a football team. You know, you, uh, if, if someone can't defend, you're not going to put them at centre-back, you know. You, but there could be a place for them somewhere else in your, in your line-up. Yeah, day. but nine times out of ten, you only do feedback forms when it's to complain. You go on any like holiday with you. There's no one going. Oh, I'll come back from holiday and tell it when how great it is. Mm. But even then, it's, it's a good. But even if everyone complains from all yeah, the yeah, it's just, yeah. it can still be a good thing. I, I can think of of one moderator that okay. Let be fair. Like, if I can think of two I've complained about. I would love it if Name you know them. they. Hmm? Name them. That, that's that's the bonus show, the Geo Huddle Extra <laughs> that you can sign up to. <laughs> but carry that on. Sounded quite suggestive. <laughs> <to him. laughs> take it as, as, you, as you want to take it. <laughs> Yeah, I think the uh, the the better conferences that that we've all seen or or read about have always been or have included some kind of like you know strong passionate debate, and I think to get that you need a moderator who can you know have a good relationship with the people he or her is speaking to, but maybe not one that's sort of dependent on them, so to speak. You know, it just needs to be a case of like he needs to be able to ask the hard questions, you know, and once those are asked, then good dialogue will flow from there, and I think that will generally improve the quality of the conferences. No. Um, I don't really have an answer for this one. I'm not really sure. I don't particularly like the engagement ones if I don't want to engage. Um, so anything forced is not my cup of tea, to be honest with you. Mm. I mean, I'll give you give you a quick chance to call uh, someone out. On I, first I mean, I agree that based based off there's one last week where everyone was just promoting themselves and the moderator was just you know asked some really simple questions yeah. so they could promote themselves and I think the best part of that of that whole panel was where someone asked a question that was provoking you know an actual conversation because it, it wasn't an easy question and I think that's those are the questions the moderators have to ask to make it better exactly. so that's what I'd do to improve it very well put well on that last point um, listeners sadly unlike a conference we're now not going to throw questions open to the floor uh, as we don't have an audience here, but uh, we are out of time. Keep listening to the Geo Huddle. You can read all our content on gamblinginsider.com and in our GI Friday newsletter. Uh, the September October edition of Gambling Insider is out now, along with our latest Gaming America and Sports Betting Focus issues. Speak soon, listeners, and if you're going to be at G2E, see you there.